welcome back to Cliffy Land. This is week in country number 44 on our second attempt of cooking the food of every country in the world. And tonight we're up to the nation of Cuba. Cuba is the largest island in the Caribbean. It is located about 90 miles south of Key West, Florida in the United States. And its nearest island neighbors are the island of Hispaniola, divided between Haiti and Dominican Republic. Haiti is closer. Jamaica, the Bahamas, and the Cayman Islands. And its food is something I am deeply familiar with having grown up in Miami as a Puerto Rican, which makes you as close to Cuban without actually being Cuban as it can get. Its food is heavy on rice and beans. You'll find pork, chicken, meat, and an occasional fish dish. Plantains are common as a side dish. And tonight we'll be cooking four dishes, the same dish as we did last time, and those are lechon asado, which is roast pork, moros y cristianos, which is a Cuban version of rice and beans, where the rice and beans are cooked together, pan cubano, which is Cuban bread, and platanos maduros, which are fried sweet plantains. These are the same four dishes we tried last time, so let's take a look and see how things went then. Well, four years ago on the Global Cooking Challenge, I was deeply, deeply, deeply embarrassed about what happened with Cuba. I think I didn't quite get the right cut of pork. It took way too long. It wasn't ready on time. I'd never baked bread before, so that looked something of an abomination. The rice and beans came out okay, and, and the platanos were a little bit overdone. We'll see how things go this time. Trivia note. Moros y Cristianos, which means Moors and Christians, is the name for the rice and beans dish, where there you have black beans and white rice. This goes back to Spain and the days of the Spanish Inquisition, being that Moros was Moors and Cristianos were Christians, and you can figure out what that meant. But enough of that, let's take a look at tonight's ingredients. First, for our lechon asado, or roast pork, we'll need three pounds of fresh ham, or pork shoulder roast, 20 cloves of garlic, two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of black peppercorns, one and a half cup of sour orange juice, that would be the juice of the sour or bitter orange, one cup of onion minced, one teaspoon of oregano, and a cup and a half of olive oil. Then, for the moros y cristianos, or Cuban black beans and rice will need one and a half cups of black beans dried a quarter cup of olive oil for sauteing two and a half cups of onions diced two and a half cups of green pepper seeded and diced four cloves of garlic crushed and chopped three teaspoons of cumin ground one teaspoon of oregano one bay leaf three tablespoons of white vinegar two tablespoons of tomato paste two teaspoons of salt a half teaspoon of pepper four and a half cups of chicken stock and three cups of long grain white rice. Then, for the pan cubano, or Cuban bread, we'll need one tablespoon of active dry yeast, two teaspoons of sugar, one and a quarter cups of warm water, two cups of bread flour, and two cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of salt, a quarter cup of lard, if lard isn't in it, it's not Cuban bread, and two tablespoons of warm water for brushing. And finally, for the platanos maduros, or fried sweet plantains, we'll need two large overripe plantains cut on the bias to one inch thick slices and two thirds of a cup of vegetable oil. Okay, that's a lot. And to make matters worse, this requires a good deal of preparation the night before to marinate that roast pork. So let's step back in time and see how things went, shall we? Go! The night before dinner, start the marinade. Into a mortar, place the garlic, salt, and peppercorns and mash into a paste. Add the dried oregano, minced onion, and sour orange juice. Gently mash together. Heat olive oil in a two-quart saucepan to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Remove from heat. Whisk gently. Pierce the roast well on all sides with a knife or fork. Coat the meat with half of the marinade, reserving the rest for basting during the cook. Cover and refrigerate for at least three hours or overnight. The next day, Remove the meat from the fridge and place in a roasting pan. Cover with marinade. Preheat the oven to 450 degrees, then lower to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Roast for at least 6 hours. This one would have taken 8 hours to reach 195 degrees Fahrenheit. Regularly baste the roast with the reserved marinade. Remove when reaches 175 degrees Fahrenheit for sliced roast or wait until it reaches 195 for pulled pork texture. Remove from the pan, cover with foil, and let rest for at least 10 minutes. Grease a large bowl and set aside. In a small bowl, dissolve the yeast, sugar, and a quarter cup of water heated to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Mix. Place the bowl in a warm place for 10 minutes until it foams. 
Meanwhile, melt the lard in the microwave. Put the water yeast mixture in a large bowl and add the rest of the water. Add salt. Mix until blended. In a separate bowl, pour the all-purpose flour and bread flour and whisk them together. Then, a quarter cup at a time, slowly add the flour to the liquid. Mix together. Mix in a little of the lard and continue alternating flour and lard until you've used up three and a quarter cups of flour and all of the lard. Mix into a sticky dough. Knead for about 10 minutes until pliable and sticky. Shape into a ball and place into the greased bowl. Flip over to coat all sides. Cover with a damp cloth and put in a warm place until doubled in size, about one hour. Which ours didn't for a number of dumb reasons. See? Using the leftover flour, dust a clean surface and rolling pin. Roll out the dough into a 12 inch by 20 inch rectangle, dusting leftover flour on both sides of the dough. Roll into a tight cylinder. Taper the ends. Wetting finger, close up the seams. Dust a baking sheet with cornmeal and place the dough diagonally on a baking sheet. Place in a warm place until two and a half times the original size, approximately 45 minutes to an hour. Ours didn't for the previous reasons. Brush with water. With a sharp knife, cut a seam, leaving two inches on each end. Preheat the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Place a pan of warm water on the bottom rack of the oven and bake for 15 to 18 minutes until crusty, brushing more water after five minutes. Put the dried beans in a two-quart saucepan. Cover with four cups of water. Bring to a boil. Boil for 20 minutes. Remove from the heat, cover, and let rest for one hour. Drain and rinse the beans. Add enough water to cover again. Bring to a boil. Reduce the heat to low and cover. And let cook for 45 minutes to an hour until tender. Drain and rinse the beans. Heat up the oil in an 8-quart saucepan over medium heat. Add onion. Add green bell pepper. Saute until softened. Add garlic. Saute for two minutes until fragrant. Add tomato paste, black beans, oregano, ground cumin, bay leaf, and vinegar. Cook for five minutes, stirring gently. Rinse the rice. Add the chicken stock, the rinsed rice. Bring to a boil and reduce heat. Cover and let simmer for 20 to 30 minutes. Heat the oil in a skillet until a drop of water sizzles. Fry the plantains in batches, cooking for about two minutes per side. Drain on a paper towel lined plate. Slice the roast into servings. Make ramekin mounds of rice. Cut servings of the bread. Plate servings of the pork. Plate the plantains alongside and serve hot. How did it all turn out? Well, I'm gonna start out right now by saying everything was indeed delicious. And yet, I screwed up in much the same way I did the last time. Part of it was trying to do the roast pork and the bread at the same time, rather than say two different nights, or using the grill for the pork. Oops. But we'll take this a step at a time. First off, the lechon asado, or roast pork. That was super delicious, it was tasty, it was juicy, the marinade gave it a phenomenal flavor, the recipe was great, the cook wasn't so great. It was a three pound pork shoulder, I cut it down from six pounds, I tried to figure out how much time it was gonna take. I figured it would take six hours at 225. Again, that was not nearly enough time. I think even at eight hours, it still wouldn't have been done. I had to crank up the heat at the end on that to get it to be a safe temperature. It tasted great. I just feel sad. It didn't taste as good as it possibly could have. Normally, a lechon asado would be done with an entire pig or at least a six pound roast. And there are only two of us eating, so we've got leftovers. Therefore, I'm giving the lechon asado four out of five globes. Someday, I'll get it to five. The pan cubano or Cuban bread. This time I tried a slightly different recipe. The use of the pan of water in the oven to help create steam in the oven did certainly help. The bread was definitely very delicious, although the texture was not at all what I would call a Cuban bread. It did not rise enough because I had it in the warming drawer, which was too warm, and so it didn't rise as much as it should have, and that's all my fault. Someday I'm gonna try this again and get it right. Yet it was super tasty. I'm gonna give the pan cubano four out of five gloves. 
boobs. I tell you one day I'm gonna do this outside of all this and it's gonna be fine. The platanos maduros. Okay, we've done the same dish maybe three times in the past few weeks. Really good, very tasty, very simple. Giving that once more, four out of five globes. And the moros y cristianos. The flavors were terrific. I made plenty of it, so I'm gonna have leftovers for the rest of the week. I'm giving the moros y cristianos four out of five globes. Well, that does it for Cuba. Remember, if you'd like to see our streams live when they happen every Tuesday night, be sure to follow us all on Periscope or Busker. Like and subscribe to be advised when these videos are posted every Wednesday night. And if you have any thoughtful feelings or helpful suggestions about the food of Cuba or any of our future nations, sound off in the comments. Remember, links to the original recipes can be found in the About section. And tune in next week when we head over to Europe, actually the Mediterranean off the coast of Asia, for another island nation and a redo of the dishes that I did last time, which proved to be the very first time I ever thought I made something that was restaurant quality, and that is the nation of Cyprus. It's gonna be great. Tune in. Till then, thanks for watching and happy eating!